Okay, so in this video, we're going to go over quadratic functions introduction part three, but we're going to, over, going to go over something called the coefficients and talk about what exactly the coefficients themselves mean. So remember, I told you that the form, the standard form for a quadratic function is f of x, again, which means the same thing as y, is equal to a times x squared, we said that was the quadratic function, uh, the quadratic term, really, plus bx, and we call this the linear term, quadratic term, linear term, plus the c. The a, the b, and the c, technically not c, but we're going to include it in coefficients anyway. The a, the b, and the c are what we call the coefficients for a quadratic function. Now, what is a coefficient? Let me just write this in here really quickly. Coefficients. The a, the b, and the c actually tell us something about the quadratic or the parabola itself, okay? And that's what I want to go over in this particular video. Now, the a, the number that's in front of the variable x, right? Um, actually, coefficients are numbers that are in front of variables to begin with, okay? So that's one definition of coefficients. But in this particular case, the a, for example, in ax squared plus bx plus c, will tell you the direction that the parabola opens. Now, what does that mean? The direction the parabola opens. So for example, we know that the parabola opens up like this one, right? Or a parabola could open downward. It can also open sideways, but again, we're not going to talk about that in, in this particular class. Now, if the a value is positive, the parabola opens upward. Okay, and which would make sense by saying then that if the parabola is, or the coefficient is a negative coefficient, the parabola will open downward. Okay, so right away we'll be able to tell something about the parabola just by looking at the equation itself. Let me give you an example. If I have The quadratic function, f of x, is equal to 2x squared plus 4x plus 1. I know immediately that this parabola is going to open upward in that direction because the a here is a positive 2. Okay, so again, positive number opens upward. So that's what the a can tell me. All right. Now, more information. The a and the b together can tell me what's called the axis of symmetry. Axis of symmetry. Now, what is the axis of symmetry? Remember, one of the things that we talked about in terms of a parabola is that you can actually cut it exactly in half, right? And that one side of the parabola is a mirror image. You just took it and you just pivoted on that axis, flip it like that, you'll get that side, okay? So this flips over to become this. This area where you actually do the pivoting is called the axis of symmetry. All right, so that's an important term. Axis of symmetry. And the axis of symmetry is some type of equation. It's usually an x value, like x is equal to 10 or x is equal to 5. And how do you find the axis of symmetry? It's basically this particular formula right here. Negative b over 2a. 
all right? So x is equal to negative b over 2a, and that will give you the axis of symmetry. Let's go back up to this example again. So what would the axis of symmetry be on this parabola? Well, let's go ahead and put in the numbers. Negative b in this case is positive 4 over 2 times, again notice I'm always putting whatever value I'm replacing, I'm putting it in parentheses. Please, please do that, that's always a helpful thing. 2 times 2. That's going to give me a negative 4 over 4 or negative 1. Now what I know about this particular equation or this parabola is that the axis of symmetry is at negative 1. Again, let's choose this as our example. Here's my x-y axis. And now there's negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, positive 1, positive 2, positive 3. So according to this, now I know that my parabola opens upward, and its axis of symmetry, what cuts it right in half, is at negative 1. Now this is a little misleading. I had to draw it somewhere. The last thing I what I don't know about this is I don't know where this particular vertex is, right? What is a vertex, you asked? Well, the vertex is the top or the bottom, the top or the bottom of the parabola, all right? The top is known as the maximum. And the bottom is known as as the minimum. Oops, there we go. So in this particular equation, I don't know whether it's doing this, or this, or this, or even down here, right? That's what I don't know yet. Is there any way to figure that out? There is. I'm going to save that for another video, but I will give you one more hint, and that's the final coefficient, which is the C. What does the C tell you? The C will tell you where the y-intercept of your parabola is located. Okay? Now, in this particular case, we know that the y-intercept is 1. So now what I can do is go back to my parabola positive 1, positive 2, positive 3, positive 4. I know that this parabola is going to cross the axis of symmetries at negative 1, and the y-intercept will be at this point here, so I should probably make that a little wider, right? But again, it could be like a really skinny thing. It just kind of gives me a little bit of an idea, though, of what the parabola is looking like. Okay, I hope that was helpful. That was a little bit long-winded, but just remember the A, the B, and the C can give you some important information about what your parabola looks like. hope that was helpful.